Good morning, good morning, good morning. Hope everybody's having a wonderful morning. Morning, Kristen, Jeffrey, morning, Paula, morning, Raymond, morning, Randy. Appreciate you guys joining me this morning on this New Year's Eve. Good morning, Angela. Good morning, Raymond. Happy New Year back to you. Happy New Year to everyone out there this morning. Um, I want to talk to you uh, briefly in this devotion about why has God been silent. You know, that's, I was listening to a program, radio, and uh, was saying uh, one of the most popular questions out there today from Christians are, why has God, has God been silent in 2020? Before you go judging or casting, you know, any judgment toward anyone, you had to think about that thing. A lot of people prayed for their loved one not to, not to be taken. A lot of people prayed that uh, they wouldn't lose their job. A lot of people prayed that they would um, have enough money to make ends meet. A lot of people prayed for that child that's gone astray, that's out there in the world, and you don't have a clue where they're at. There's been a lot of people that have prayed, and it's gotten worse. And so uh, I want to talk to you today. That's who I'm here for. I, I'm Again, I'm nervous this morning because Beverly's not with me. Um, just want to say she's with me in prayer, and uh, she's watching this video but you know it's, it's we come down here in the woods and you get used to people somebody being with you you know you don't realize how important that person is just her presence so i know she does so much in this ministry y'all have no idea all i do is get on here and preach that's all i do um god give me her to help me in this ministry and um she's a blessing so y'all lift her up in prayer because she's burned her leg uh bad uh, first and second degree burn so she's getting better Appreciate all the prayers. Appreciate all the people that have been watching these videos. Appreciate some of my old friends that I see have started watching. It's good to have you. I'm glad you're watching. And I um, want you all to know I appreciate all of you. So, enough rambling. Uh, Happy New Year. Let's go to book of uh, 1 John. 1 John chapter 4, verses 15 through 19. 1 John chapter 4, verse 15 through 19. Good morning, everyone. Let me know where you're watching from. Happy New Year to everybody. Please share this video. Um, I appreciate your prayers for us and uh, and for Beverly. First John chapter four, verse fifteen. The Bible says, "Whosoever shall confess that Jesus is the Son of God, God dwelleth in him, and he in God." And we have known. Listen, and we have known. You can know today. You can know that you're loved by God. There's so many people that doubt their love for God or God's love for them. And why? Because when God seems to be silent, the first thing we start doing is doubting, does he even care? You know, when somebody gives you the silent treatment, that, that works on your mind. Now, I don't think God has been silent. I think God has been speaking through 2020. But I understand some people to feel that he has been silent because some of their prayers have feel they have fell on deaf ears. But listen, God hears every prayer. God knows every single need you have before you know. Um, and he's working all things out for our good and his glory. But the scripture says, John, all through the epistle of John, he says, you can know. We can know. There's people struggling. I feel the Lord and I got to stop here. I, there's people that believe that they can't be saved. There's people that believe they blaspheme the Holy Spirit. There's people that have got all these things going on with them. And, and I get these messages and I've, I've, I've gotten more than one message on or question on that subject. I know what that feels like. I know the, the hopelessness, the despair of not knowing and thinking God is being silent toward us. But listen, when we want to hear from God, we have to ask the right questions. You want God to answer, you have to ask the right questions. And the way you do that is you get alone and you seek his face. And we stop asking for God to, to get us back to where we used to be. We stop asking for God to fix this and fix that because we want him to, to fix our situation. But we say, God, fix me. Fix me. Help me. Show me what you're trying to show me in this stage of life or this season I'm in. We have to ask the right questions. God gives the silent treatment. Not Sometimes not because he, definitely not because he doesn't see where you're at, but simply because he's waiting for you to ask the right questions. I think a lot of times we look at God as if, I hate to even say this, but it's almost like we look at him as like a genie in the sky. You know, we, God just did get, grant my wish. God has feelings. God, God is a being. He, he has, he has feelings. He loves, he, he, he wants our affection. And see, that's where he led me in the scripture and he's getting me back to the word. It says, 
and you have known and believed the love that God hath to us. God is love. And he that dwelleth in love dwelleth in God and God in him. Herein is our love made perfect that we may have boldness in the day of judgment because as he is, so are we in this world. Listen, that's powerful. That's powerful. As he is, so are we in this world right now. If you have the spirit of the living God inside of you, you're a representative of the Lord Jesus Christ on this planet. Even things are going bad in your life or around you, you're still a representative of Jesus Christ. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear because fear has torment, doesn't it? Fear has torment. The devil uses fear. He uses fear to create a torment, to torment us, but he uses fear to divide us. He uses fear to, to cause us to doubt and to believe that God is so far away. The devil's strongest weapon against us is fear. But the Bible says God is love and perfect love cast out fear. So obviously the devil would try to use the very opposite of love. He wants to come at us to try to destroy us, to kill, steal, and destroy. And he always starts with fear. Fear of this, fear of that, doubt this, doubt that. Just like he told Eve in the garden, would God really mean what he said? I mean, that's pretty much what he told her when he tempted her. Would God really do mean what he really said? We've got to understand something. He, the devil knows our nature. He understands our shortcomings. He sees our weak points. He sees what we believe are our strong points. But if we walk in love, we don't have to fear any of that. We can simply know that we walk with, with the Lord. There is no fear in love, but perfect fear casts out fear because fear hath torment. He that feareth is not made perfect in love. Now, this is, the, this is the, the one that God really pressed upon me yesterday. Verse 19, we love him because he loved us. We love him because he first loved us. I don't know about you, but there's times when I wonder, do I, do I love God the way I should? Do I really love him the way he deserves? And there's times when I feel like, how could God love me? But the bottom line is this. We love God simply because he first loved us. You didn't and I didn't decide to just love God one day. We love him because he first loved us. He has a, a love that we can't explain, a love that we can't contain. The Bible says we'll be given new bodies when we go to heaven. To, we have to have new bodies for, for, for one reason, obviously, is no sin will enter into heaven. This flesh will not enter into heaven. But my spirit, but he's going to give me a new body. He's going to give you a new body. And that resurrected body is going to be able to hold the love of God, the joy of God. Joy unspeakable and full of glory. Everything that we face in life will pale and fade away when we're in heaven. Nothing, the, the losses we've had, the struggles we have, there's been gifts in the struggles. We've been given so many gifts in our struggles. 2020, people are saying, you know, I want to move into 2021. Happy New Year. Praise the Lord. Let's get out of 2020. But look, we, we need to think about what's happened in 2020. There's been gifts in 2020. You say, I don't believe that because I've lost a loved one. I too have lost somebody that I love. We've lost loved ones. We, we've, 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 we've had financial hardships. We've had fear. Everybody's stocking up on toilet paper and meat and all this other crazy stuff that's been going on all year. And we have, I could go on and on. Uh, the election, why has God been silent there? We prayed. We had for, uh, spiritual leaders like Franklin Graham and others that were standing up and trying to rally people to think about what they're voting for and, and what their vote means. And we feel, uh, what happened, God? Why are you silent? God's not silent. God's not turned his back on America. God's not decided not to, to work on our behalf or to try to help us in what we're trying to achieve for his glory. God is simply asking for us, you ask me if I'm silent. I ask you, what are you asking me for? What do you want? What do you really want? Do you want America? Do you want what you had? Do you want what you thought was perfect existence? Do you want to go back to your buildings in the churches instead of on the streets trying to reach those that won't go to your buildings? Do you want to go back uh, to the way things were because it was comfortable? When I, If you go and do what I told you to, it's gonna, you're going to step out of your comfort zone. What are you really asking for? Because, see, we'll keep asking for them comfortable things. We'll keep asking for God to give us what's familiar. But God says, no, I'm going to give you what's supernatural. But to have that, you've got to go through some struggles. Because in that struggle are going, are going to be gifts. Those gifts won't be recognized right away. We want to run into 2021. We want to get out of 2020. 
My friend, let me tell you something. There has been gifts given us all through 2020. I think about the disciples in the boat. This is this is the turmoil I had this morning, and now I understand why he brought that scripture. I didn't know what to start with this morning. But in Mark, the ninth chapter, I believe it's the ninth chapter, the disciples, he told them, he said, go, go across to the other side. He was in the boat with them. See, we're children of God. I have the Spirit of God with me. I come down here alone, but I'm not alone. I come down here in the woods, and I don't see anyone, but there's someone here. The Spirit of the living God is with me wherever you're at this morning, whether you're at work, in your office, at home, wherever you're in the hospital, God is with you. You're not alone. He's not forsaking you. He's not being silent. You're not getting the silent treatment for God. Sometimes when God's not speaking, that's when we can have the most peace. Rest in Him. Be, be faithful. Be still. And know that I am God. That's how we please Him, by faith. In that Mark ninth chapter, they were going across to sea. Jesus was asleep on a pillow in the boat. The Bible says a great storm, a, a squall came up. And it was raging. And the boat was being filled with water. And I don't know about you, but I'd be looking back like, okay, now he uh, he's fed all these people. He's cast out demons. Uh Hello, how is he sleeping? And they, they, they become very fearful and they were afraid, but God was in the boat with them. He, God that created, told to see how far it could come. Created light, separated light from darkness, created all things that we know of and things we don't even know of, was in the boat with them. And they become so afraid. Why? Because of fear, the doubt of, does he really care? Does he really care? He's in the boat, but he doesn't care if we perish. As a matter of fact, Thank you, Lord. That's exactly what they said. When they looked back, they said, Master, in verse 38, Master, carest not that we perish? Can you be honest? Somebody out there and say, I have asked God, does he care? Do you really care? I have many times. God, do you really care? Do you really care about my finances, Lord? Because there's been times when I've been in financial hardships and I've thought, does he really care? I want to pay my bills. I don't want to be behind on my bills. Does God really care? I thought God cared. I thought God wanted me to have a, a good reputation in the credit world and, 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 and pay my bills. And, and so nobody will think, oh, you know, as a preacher, this is how Satan comes at me. As a preacher, I've got more responsibility, it seems. That's not true. That we're all children of the Most High God. I'm no better than you are. I'm not supposed to be on a higher standard than you are. We're all children of the Most High God. The Bible says He's no respecter of persons. But for some reason, if I screw up or I mess up or, or get behind on something, I feel that I bring a reproach against God because I'm a preacher. Let me tell you something. I, the devil will try to put more pressure on us. He'll try to put things on it. He'll, he'll put heavy loads and burdens on us. That's what the Pharisees done. The scribes, Jesus said, you put all these burdens on people. You can't even keep them yourself. Don't you care, Lord? Don't you care that my dad is about to pass away? Don't you care that my uncle has COVID? Don't you care, Lord? If you cared, why would you let this happen? Don't you care that all these babies that will be aborted because of the, the, we thought we had it going the right way, and now all of a sudden it's going right back into the, the left side, 2020. Don't you care, God? Don't you care? that I've lost my child? Don't you care that I prayed that you would not let that happen, that you would intervene in their life and deliver them from that, abuse, that addiction? Don't you care? Those are real questions. Those are real questions. And for me to sit here and tell you some spiritual answer that, that sounds good won't help you. You know what will help you? To know, number one, he does care more than you ever know, will know. He does care. And he loves the one that you loved more than you could ever love him. I promise you that. I promise you that. You can never love that child like God loves that child. You can never love your parents like God loves your parents. You can never love yourself like God loves you. God has a love, and we can know that love today. Don't you care? He arose and rebuked the wind and said unto the sea, Peace, be still. And the wind ceased and there was a great calm. People are saying, we get out of 2020, 2021, maybe it'll be, we'll have peace. It won't be quite as bad. He said, peace, be still. 
peace. Be still. And then he turned around and looked at him. And he says, why are you so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? And they feared exceedingly and said one to another, What manner of man is this that even the wind and the sea obey him? Now, really what they were saying was, We fear you more than we fear that storm now. We were afraid of the wind. We were afraid of the, the waves. We were afraid that the boat was sinking. And Lord, we were afraid that you didn't care. You were silent. You were asleep. But now we fear the power that you, that you possess. We fear you above all things that is hallelujah that is what i'm trying to share this morning that is what god is trying to get through me fear god i don't mean fear that he wants to condemn you i don't mean fear that he's mad at you i don't mean fear that he is out to get you i mean fear god with a reverent holy fear that he is in control no matter how crazy your life has gotten no matter what has happened in your life god sovereignly is in control of all things and he's working things out and we have to understand that he is not silent he is always speaking to those that listen to those that will open their hearts the bible says the fear of the lord is the beginning of wisdom and the knowledge of his of the holy is understanding we have to understand today we have been taught not to fear god we have been taught to be comfortable with god and get to a place where he's like my buddy or jesus is like some hippie with with uh long flowing hair and flowers in his hair singing kumbaya that ain't who the lord is god is the god of glory he's the great i am you know when jesus was on this planet he was not some hippie walking around he was i believe he was rugged i believe he was tough i believed it a lot of people didn't understand where he was coming from because they expected him to be a certain way. They wanted him to look and act a certain way. They wanted him to associate with a certain people. But God is God all by himself. And we're not to ask him to follow our will. The Bible says we're to follow Jesus. We're to follow him. It's, it's easy for us to try to help someone that's going through a struggle when we don't have that same struggle. It's easy in the fact that we don't have to bear that burden. But we're supposed to bear one another's burdens and we're supposed to try to understand exactly where they're coming from and what they're going through and god is wanting us to know in 2020 that even though we want to escape and go to 2021 and even though it seems that he has been silent in 2020 he has given us gifts in the struggle of this year he has given us the gift of understanding why we worship him many people and i'm i'm, I'm just going to go through as god leads me many people believe if they show up at a building that that constitutes worship for god and that pleases god and i'm not saying that doesn't please god and i'm not saying you didn't worship god in your building but we have learned now that we don't have to go in a building to find god we have learned now that god is everywhere if we'll simply lift up our hands and worship him we have learned now preachers to go and take the church outside the four walls which is what we should have been doing in the first place we have learned some valuable things there has been gifts given to the church through this through this struggle of 2020 and there has been gifts given to some of you today some of us today that have lost and suffered loss because that same gift is a gift of peace where he says peace be still after everybody's left after all the food's gone all the people are gone and you're left at home and there's that empty chair sitting at the table or that that, that memory because going through Christmas or, or what you've been going through because of that, the loss of that one you love so much, God has said, peace, be still. That's a peace that you couldn't experience without going through the struggle. I hope I'm helping you today. I hope I'm not rambling because I really feel in my heart God is wanting you to see the gift in this struggle. The gift in what you've been through is his peace. The Bible says it is the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed because his compassions fail not. He never he never loses compassion for us. He gets angry. He's hurt sometimes. He, I believe God is offended sometimes by us. I, I think sin is an offense to him. He definitely doesn't want us living in sin and walking in sin and being simple. But you know what? His compassion doesn't fail. He doesn't change his mind and say, Oh, man, I don't know if I love him anymore or love her anymore. No, his compassion doesn't fail for me. He says, They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, saith my soul. Therefore will I hope to him. The Lord is good unto them that wait for him, to the soul that seeketh him. Listen to this. It is good that a man, it is good that a person should both hope and quietly wait for the salvation of the Lord. 
2021 is upon us. We don't have a clue what's going to happen. We don't know how good or bad things will get. But one thing I can tell you is if we will wait on the Lord and trust him and realize that this boat's being battered, we're being hit each and every way we can be hit. We're perplexed. We're, we're struggling. Waves are crashing. The boat's filling up. But inside that boat is God Almighty, and he ain't asleep. He's not silent. He's a very present help in times of trouble. That whole thing that they went through on that, in that boat, believing they were forsaken, believing don't, don't even care, it's the same thing people are going through to this day. Does God really care? My friend, God cares more than you'll ever know. If you know him today, if you're a child of God and you're, you're going through this life through struggles and tribulations, he said it would be this way. He said it would be this way. He said there'll be tribulation, but be a good cheer. I've overcome this world. If you don't know him today, if you don't have a clue who I'm talking about, then the tribulations of this world are, are not the end of it. There's a greater greater suffering coming, a, a, a separation from God. I don't tell you that to scare you. I don't care to tell you that to be negative. I'm just being honest with you. God wants us to come through this life as witnesses for him, full of his power, his grace, his spirit. Storms are going to come. Storms are going to go. He's still with us in the boat. He's still walking with us. He's still carrying us sometimes. He's opening doors no man can open. He's closing doors no man can close. He's making a way where there is no way. He's giving his peace in an unpeaceful situation. He's, he's giving you mercy when you don't deserve mercy. He's giving us all these gifts. But if you don't know him today, the greatest gift that you've missed is salvation. Because those that know him have been given the gift of himself. God says, it's not enough. It's not enough that I forgive their sins. I want to live in them. I want to stay in them. They're my church. I'm going to fill them with my spirit. I want to be as close to them as I possibly can. I want them to worship me. I want to be involved in every aspect of their life. Because I'm a good God. And I love them with an everlasting love. Happy New Year. I know 2020 has been a struggle. Don't forget the gifts through this, the struggle of this year. Don't forget the gifts that he's given you. For those of you that are struggling with loss, my heart goes out to you today. But that peace beyond all understanding is a real peace, a real comfort. And I promise you, whoever I'm talking to today, if you will put your trust in him, if you will get along with him and ask the right questions, he'll start answering you directly. I can't advise you any more than that other than trust God and know he loves you. He loves you. Let the words of our mouth, the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in his sight. O oh Lord, our strength and our redeemer in Jesus' name. Amen. Happy New Year and God bless all of y'all.